as we've seen with many other things, say like with marriage or with many of his statements, he he strays his foot over the line, creating that confusion and suggesting that in, at some point soon we'll be uh, we'll be revising this teaching. Yeah, it, it's a sad thing because it relates back to easy annulments um, for a long time, and the Pope. Uh, Pope John Paul II and Pope Benedict both complained that this was going on. It was basically, you know, it was a Catholic form of divorce because it was ridiculous the the way annulments were being handed out, almost like candy. So you do end up doing very grave harm to the sacrament, but also to married couples who, in times of hardship, then begin to wonder about the validity of their marriages. And so it's a very troublesome thing. You know, couples struggling should be able to call on the grace of marriage, not wonder if their marriage is, is valid or not. Um, so very, very damaging things indeed. But the calling of, you know, Benedict as if, you know, supporting his thesis, which when he's talking the opposite, that's kind of a concerning thing. And we've seen that over and over again. Uh, and in fact, just a few weeks ago with regard to uh, same-sex unions in another interview that he gave. When he was talking then about priestly celibacy, also something, again, a complicated issue because he raises the, you know, married priesthood in um, the Eastern Rite and talks about that. Give us some clarity. What did he say and um, how does that play out in Catholic thought? So he was, uh, he was expanding on, on celibacy and he... Uh, he was asked about whether or not that could be a subject for change or revision in the upcoming years. And so he stated, there's no contradiction for a priest to marry. <laughs> he said, uh, celibacy in the Western church is a, a temporary prescription. Um, he said it's, it's not an eternal uh, aspect like the priestly ordination, which confers the, the, priestly, the priestly state. Um, so he, he just called celibacy the discipline. Um, and then he was then asked again specifically, could this be revised? And he said, well, yeah. So um, it, he's, he's mentioned this uh, a couple of times over the, over the last few years. Uh, again, in, in quite a number of interviews, he's, he's probed on whether or not celibacy could be, uh, could be revised. And he, he often comes back to this argument that, well, it's just, it's just a law. <clears throat> and as we've seen with many other things, say like with marriage, with many of his statements, he he strays his foot over the line, creating that confusion and suggesting that in, at some point soon we'll be uh, we'll be revising this teaching. Uh, but it's this is very very dangerous, particularly in light of, in, especially in light of the German Church, the Synodal Way, where you have very strong liberal forces who are arguing for for female deacons or for married priests or for um, for transsexual uh, uh, deacons or priests, for Pope Francis then to, to casually suggest that the, the rule of celibacy is just, you know, something that could change at will or change as the church goes into a new age or not. Mm -hmm. So let's delve into that because in the Eastern church, uh, it is permitted, which, which he mentions, but there's some rules around that. Uh, in the Eastern church, uh, it's the Catholic church, you can't get married if you're already a priest. You can, however, if already married, become a priest. So that's the way they have it in the Eastern Catholic churches, uh, in some of them. But you also cannot become a bishop if you are married. So there is a distinction there. They recognize still that the proper or best form is to conform yourself as a priest to Jesus Christ himself, who, of course, was unmarried. St. Paul says very clearly in the scriptures, I, uh, you know, uh, I wish that you were as me, in other words, celibate. And it is very clear from the church's perennial teaching that that is the superior way. It, you know, to give oneself um, in that way to the Lord is a higher calling. But you know, it is one that is proper for priests. And I know there's the permission, but even the Eastern Church acknowledges that the best way is celibacy. Yeah, exactly. I think your your uh, reference there to sacred scripture is is one of the more beautiful arguments that 
the call to the priesthood is, is not like a call to another role in in the rest of the world. It's a call apart to something where you are a father of souls and you're, you're ministering to all those around you. And very much so that, that involves, if it's to be Christ-like, whose love was a sacrificial love, which involved him dying for us on the cross, the priesthood then has to imitate that Christ-like love, which is sacrificial, which is um, a death to oneself and to the world. And to therefore deny oneself the, the natural inclinations uh, towards marriage and to follow Christ in that very particular, very, very beautiful vocation, which is the, the celibate state. And um, this is, I think, something which has cropped up time and time again as a, a means to attack the church from those either who hate the church within the church or without the church, because the celibacy of the sacred priesthood is something so beautiful that opponents of the church really see it as one of the main goals to to destroy completely. <clears throat> because once you remove the priesthood as, as something set apart, as a, a state of life which you have to sacrifice so much for, then the church becomes like a normal organization, a normal business with branches in different parts of the world. And it's positions of authority and it's uh, are no longer held by those who sacrifice everything in order to follow Christ. Hi, everyone. This is John Henry Weston. We hope you enjoyed this program. To see more like it, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to get all the latest content from LifeSite News. Check the links in the description to read more and connect with us on social media so that you can stay up to date with all the latest life, family, faith, and freedom news. Thanks for watching and may God bless you.